Hey everybody, gonna work on the Atlas tonight. The belts came in. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. The uh, package came in from this uh, company called Best Torque, B-E-S-T-O-R-Q, and it says that it's from the shipping manager at Best Torque Incorporated uh, of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and there's actually a phone number on here too, um, and that's interesting because this is not the company that I bought the belts from. Uh, I bought the belts online from a, a website and um, just goes to show you, I'm pretty sure the website was just acting as a like a portal, uh, commerce. Uh, you know what they probably do is they they process all of the online orders, and then just uh, have this company drop ship the belts direct to their customers, and then they tack on, you know, their profit. Um, that's common in this day and age. Um, but the reason why I point this out. Um, is because I've had instances where this happened before and then I was able to save this information and sometimes what you end up finding out is you end up finding out that you can actually deal direct with the company so this company right here I might be able to call them and the next time I need belts I might be able to go directly to them and get them for even cheaper if you can imagine that because these belts were actually pretty darn cheap another kind of giveaway that this might be uh, that kind of a situation is it says billing is third party. On the packing slip it clearly says V-Belt, um, v, vbeltsupply.com which is the company that I actually went to online, uh, Global Supply LLC. And they're located in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So again, that's why I think that they're not, uh, they're not uh, really a, um, so much a distributor as they are a um, a web-based um, marketing company. All right, so I should have, uh, let's see, if memory serves me, one of these belts is extra long, that's definitely one belt that's going to run the motor. But these other three belts, two are going to be the same size, and then one a little bit shorter. So we've got one 31-inch belt and two 30-inch belts. Know that the 230s are going to go uh, on the compound drive section, and then the 31 is going to go over here on the uh, step pulley section. So I need to find my cutters because these things help each other. Monkey twine. Let's go. All right. All right, so I've put the belts on, and uh, I'm very hopeful this is going to be the last time I need to put these on. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to pre-lubricate the uh, Babbitt bearing surfaces in here. So I'm going to get some oil and a brush and brush those lightly with oil. Now, they do sell specialized oils for um, spindles on lathes. Uh, I believe uh, Vactra or Vectra is... One of the trade names, I think, by Shell. They have special whey oil, they have special spindle oils and everything, but on this lathe, which is a 1930s vintage lathe with Babbitt bearings, the original owner's manual um, actually called for the use of straight motor oil, 30 weight. Straight 30 weight motor oil is a little tough to come by these days, and not only that, but 30 weight motor oil today is quite a bit different than 30, mo 30 weight motor oil back then main difference being that there's a lot of additives and detergents that were added to the oil and rather than trying to find an oil that doesn't have all that stuff in it we're not going to get fancy here we're going to put um, regular 30 weight oil I, have, I actually have this is an, not ancient old but it is an older container of uh, 10W30 Sitco SuperGuard oil so this has um, it has some stuff in it, but uh, it might have less stuff in it than, say, like uh, the newest oils of today. So I'm just going to use my uh, little applicator brush and get a little bit of oil on this brush. And now there are little oil cups 
that have oil, uh, that have a place for the oil to be put into little reservoirs that go on top of the bearing caps. And we'll, you know, we'll obviously put oil in there. But what I'm doing here is I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing the equivalent of uh, when you put on, um, when you're putting a new engine together and you, um, you put on uh, a lubricant on the metal parts, assembly lubricant, so that when the engine is turning over for the first time, you don't have bare metal to metal with no lubrication um, happening. So the reason why I put my belts on is so that now I can hopefully avoid getting oil all over my belts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and lift the spindle up. And lower it in without hopefully getting the belts to touch. Alright, and now I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the tops of the journals there on that spindle before I put the caps on. And again, I'm going to be careful to try and avoid as best as possible getting oil all over my new belts. On it, I can install my bearing caps, make sure my shims are in place. So this is that little cup right here. So what happens is you fill this up with oil. The oil sits in here and as it's running it comes out that little hole and follows Fill this up as it's running. It comes out this little hole and migrates along this groove to be distributed along the whole surface of the uh, spindle. Unlike previously when I've taken these off and putting them back on, uh, I'm tightening these down pretty good now. Uh, if there is a torque specification for these, I have no idea what it is. So I'm just uh, making sure they're tight and uh, I'm just going to hope for the best on that. That does spin freely, so that's good. Now uh, I've got to pop this counter shaft assembly out and get my belts on. And this is the 31. That's going to go here. One of the two 30s, so it's going to go on this pulley. And then the other. He's going to go here. Got this handle way in the wrong position. Grease on my fingers. Touch the belts again. Don't position I've got all the belts where they're supposed to be. I've got all the belts where I want them. I've got the two uh, 30s over here on the compound and then I've got this one on this pulley over here. So now for the moment of truth let's uh, get a tight 
this up there just a little bit more. It's a little loose still. I want to readjust these in a minute. Just want them tight right now. The moment of truth. feel this one's a little too tight. These all could bear, these all could handle a little less tension on them. So I'm going to disengage it and I'm going to readjust my two uh, screws down here to bring this down. This one's lower than that one I can see right now. So at the start I'm going to lower this one. wrench for this lock nut and my 3 8 wrench to hold this turning while I tighten the lock. Now let's take a look at how this is working now. Okay, so we've got this, uh, this part right here is disengaged out that way. We've got this on the largest pulley up top, which should give us the highest speed when it's a direct drive. So, let's see, I don't remember if this is direct drive. in direct drive right now when I'm noticing that this is slipping a little bit. Not bad, but it's slipping. I guess I am going to have to go a little bit tighter on that one. So now let me try and get it into a uh, compound get into the compound drive mode and see how it acts. So I'm going to disengage the tension and make my job a little easier. And what I'm doing is I'm going to try and get this collar to click over, which if I recall correctly, I think I have to turn this pulley right here. There we go. That's it. So now, tension back on, and we are now in compound drive. Lo and behold, this belt is slipping really badly on here. Yep. Ah, got to tighten them up. All right, so I've backed off the lock nuts a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. So they get them out of the picture. And uh, decided I'm going to uh, put the tension on with the tension on, I'm going to look at what we got going on here. So that one's slipping like a son of a gun. So let's tighten this in, back this out as we do it a little bit. Let's see what that is right there. Still slipping a little bit. better. I'm wondering if this still... You 
know what? I'm thinking there's still some oil residue on that pulley. That is not going to be helping my cause. Okay, so here's what I did. I just backed off my lock nuts and I uh, readjusted the tension on this belt after cleaning the pulleys. And um, this one seems to be working pretty well now. Now I've taken the tension off and I'm just checking to see if the, uh, if the jack shaft mounts are tight. This one's a little loose. Not much, but just a little bit. But I'm noticing that this one seems a little bit lower than this one, so I think I'm going to bring this one up a little bit. That'll increase the tension on this belt. Okay, so what I've learned is that when I get the belt tension tight enough so that it works well, it is a little difficult to engage this uh, lever here. If the uh, lathe was bolted down to the bench like I used to have it, it'd be much easier, but i got to push it back the whole the lathe wants to rock back. And my motor is just sitting on there loosely, so I didn't want to knock that on the floor. All right, I've moved the camera over to this side because I'm working on this, putting this belt here. And it was way, way too tight. And with the motor moved all the way forward in its slots here, it still was too tight. So I loosened up these two bolts here, and that allows me to tilt this whole bracket up so I'll be able to adjust the tension on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, Going to, uh, I'm going to bolt this motor into position on the bracket 